It's a flash. What's up everybody? Today we are gonna be taking a quick unboxing tour of the 8300 Pro. What I have here is, well, to be honest, it's not a brand new 8300 Pro. I kept all the items inside of it. I've actually opened this already and I've run through using it myself and I'll give my final thoughts and who I think this flash is for at the end of the video. But for now, we're gonna take a little bit of a peek inside and kind of see what you get for your purchase. First off though, this is from the brand Godox, which is pretty good to know because Godox is a pretty solid brand when it comes to a price point for what you get. They usually have pretty solid build quality. They have a lot of offerings when it comes to lighting modifiers and other sort of bits and pieces, and they're pretty well supported. So you know you're getting into a brand or an ecosystem that has some supportability and is used by a lot of people because, hey, it actually works. So, all right, without further ado, let's open this puppy up. Before we go on, let's take a look at the box. Let's take a look at what you get. Obviously, there's nothing too whiz bang here. It just gives you a picture of what you're getting. The back I did want to show has a few of the other offerings that you can get related to the ecosystem system for the 8300 Pro. These are specific to the 8300. Now this piece here, this item, which we can walk over, which is an additional S2 bracket that actually I have a, an example I can show you a little bit later in the video, but uh, it works on the 8200 as well. But these are some other things that come along that you can go and purchase separately for use with your 8300. All right, nothing much to the box that you get, but you do get inside this nice little black box, which to be honest is quite compact. If you look at it, you know, I mean, using my hands as a reference point, here's a dry erase marker. It's actually not too big. And I think that's one of the major features you're gonna find from this is definitely the portability related to this. What I will say, pretty solidly well-made. It's got nice edges on it. And I always hold brands in high esteem when they have good packaging, because it means that if they take good care of the packaging, then they're probably interested in their products doing well too. Wow. All right, we got some, ooh, really exciting photo lighting solution. Just what I needed. Yes, our usual little uh, cleaner and our manual. We're going to spend a little bit of time going through this a little bit later, but you know, not much going on there. So this is what you're presented with. It doesn't look like much, but there's not much to what you need. So it keeps it pretty compact. And I guess we could start off with this white layering piece here. This is your battery. So you've actually got a battery here. Hopefully it'll focus. This is the battery type it will actually utilize. When I was doing some reviews on this, I actually saw someone say that the battery that works inside of this puppy also works in the 400 or is it the 200? I believe it's the 200, even though it protrudes a little bit. They said it actually is the same type of battery, or at least it wouldn't hurt it. It might be a bigger one on this one, but they're the same type of battery. So they got the two prongs right there. They got a little bit of protection, which I kind of dig. And yeah, that's the battery. Here we go. Here's our charger. Obviously our charging cable. I'm going to lie. This is a nice one. It's not a cheap one. It's actually very thick. So it's like little things like that that usually let me know that the brand cares. And I just take as like a sign of like, cool, you know, they, they give a shit. So your charger, pretty straightforward. It does have a dial here from zero to 100, or I guess it's 25% to 100%. So you get the four brackets there. It's pretty straightforward. Plugs in, not much to it. It really only does charge this kind of battery, but what do you expect? That's still great. It charges pretty fast, to be honest. This is our bracket for holding it. And as you can see, it's say this is your standard lighting mount on top there. You've got a, an umbrella holder, which will slide in there. It's just got a pressured little hook and it just slides in there. There's no little thing to screw it down. You've got your spinner to attach this to our light. And then this is your locking mechanism to lock it in place. And this thing here, uh, I would say, is one of the major downsides of this entire thing. This is too small in my opinion. I wish there was a little more leverage on this. And if we kind of look at how big it is, it's not too bad. You can see my hands and the, the size of it. It's not too bad, but when the whole unit is sitting there, it's actually a little hard to tighten down. Although it does seem to stay sturdy, assuming that there isn't like a giant umbrella inside of this, which obviously, you know, what are you doing with that anyway? So that is what we have as far as the other items. Let's take a look at the actual flash itself. And this is what we're presented with. This is the puppy coming here and we have this little cap on it that comes with it inside. They've got nice little protection. We've got a little bit of a foam pad here, which is great. And then just inside there, they've even wrapped a little bit of foam extra around the bulb itself. Now you don't get a spare bulb with this. You just get the one bulb. And I have read some pretty good reviews about long lasting on these bulbs. And these are, you know, the new style, right? They're very flat. They're very bright and capable. They've slightly diffused on the front there. This is definitely a awesome little flash. You have a cool little unlocking mounting bracket here. So this is if you want to sort of make the more directional light automatically right out of it, obviously nothing's going to flash off to the side. Now, if you're going to use a lighting modifier, boom, you can take this off. And honestly, inside of here, you can utilize what is actually what I was showing you on the back of the box is an lighting modifier in here that will allow for the lighting modifier to go on here that is from the brand, right? It's from, they, they sell their own proprietary sort of linking mechanisms, not Bowen's mount or whatever. It actually is this, whatever this 
this mount type is. So that is one way that you can put a lighting on this modifier on this is that you have to purchase their in-house version. So it won't really work on anything else other than just the 8300. Yes, it doesn't work on the 200 and no, it doesn't work on the 400. So it kind of does limit you, which is kind of annoying, but you can get into those other brackets that I showed you on the box later on if you want to, you know, really utilize this for the best of its ability. Let's put the thing on the, it's got a couple of mounting brackets there. I usually put this on the right side because I'm right-handed. Cool, it's on there, pretty sturdy, not a big problem. Like I said, this thing is a little bit, I wish I had a little more leverage on it, but honestly, you know, again, using it, I'm really now feeling it. Whatever this uh, washer they have in here is, is actually holding very well. It's not like the crunchy plastic ones, like when it locks down, it's locked. And I'm like shaking that and using all of its weight. So that I feel pretty safe about. That was actually kind of hard to undo because I tightened it. So I don't feel too bad about it. I just wish I was using it sometimes when there's umbrellas and I did realize that it was a little harder to actually manipulate that. So I'm gonna put this back on so I can use it to protect it. Again, this cap can go on it for when you're traveling. You just throw that on, put it in your bag, put this off. Obviously portability is there. Let's put this down and let's put this puppy in. I think I got some charge in here. I do have some charge in there. You gotta hold it down. So the power mechanism is a hold down. I'm not really gonna go in super depth into utilizing the piece, the item, because if you've used the Godoc flash, you kind of know how this interface works. It's pretty much the standard is whatever they've got. It's pretty straightforward. It works. Like you can just quickly do the flash. You can do a test. You can sync this very easily. I was usually utilizing is on TTL last. It's very simple, easy to use when it comes to other Godox interfaces. So I'm not sure about interfacing with other channels as far as you utilizing other brands, Yongnuo or other things that are remotes, but this is super easy to connect with their own internal wireless connections. Case in point, this little puppy here, the X Pro C, which is for the Canon, that's what the C stands for. Let me put that in view. This thing is perfect. This can control up to four flashes, I believe. I believe that's what each one of these dials on the side for. This thing is an absolute beast. It, it's more, more so about the fact that it's just plug and play. You plug this in, this thing just works immediately. And I have another flash that is over here. I have the Godox, what is it? The DP600 II, that puppy, they both just plug in. You just gotta make sure that you go, hey, this one is, they're all on the same sort of channel, which is easily changed. You can set any mode you want there. You can change the channel. You can go through it. You got your modes. You can change how fast the flash is. You can, again, also control that from this as long as you're utilizing this one inside of its own ecosystem. But it has all the settings you would possibly want to go through. It's very straightforward. It's quite a nice little flash. Here's the thing with it. There's the unlock. We're going to pull this out. This is really the gist of what you're getting. You're getting a relatively well-built flash that is portable. This is the main thing. And to like really point this out, I'm going to showcase the Godox uh, DP. P600, which is a fixed light. So it's not battery operated. And it's something I have as another option. There's the cable, just the cable. There's the DP600. These put out relatively the same light. Obviously, this is a little bit brighter, but this is more about older technology. It's a lot cheaper. You know, you're paying about 100 bucks for this as opposed to 300. You know, you start putting on modifiers on this. These things start getting really big, really quick. So this is the DP600 versus this. This fits in a backpack. This fits in a satchel, you know, like a little side bag. And that's really what you're getting. I really think that when it comes to the build quality, it's pretty nice. It's not very loud when it comes to the fans that you are on the side here. It really isn't that loud. The cycle time on it is really nice for something this size. And I think that that really is kind of probably the difference between the 200 and this 300. A lot of reviews, I saw people talking about the 200 and they were referencing how the cycle time wasn't quite all that. This puppy cycles as fast as you want. So if you're an intermediate photographer or if you're a little bit more advanced, this thing will probably keep up with you. Short of doing like massive amounts of bursts and really going for high sinks, this thing is not gonna maybe keep up there and you might be looking at the 400, but this is for the person who's like, hey, I'm gonna do shoots with people, maybe go jump on some peer spaces and check out some other locations. Again, you can't really beat it with the size and the package that you get everything in here for. Really quickly, I wanted to show you that this is usually like the kit I travel with would be that. This thing, you don't even need this because it shoots about 500 shots and that. That's everything that comes along. I can just throw this in a backpack. If you want to be a little more protective, you can utilize that. And then if I'm not traveling with this, you know, which this is just a quick umbrella, I bring this puppy right here. This is the S2. Now, when you go to look for a bunch of reviews on this, you're not getting the best description of what this is. So the S2 works with a bunch of different flashes. It has a little bracket that sits inside of here and it can allow the uh, 200 to sit in there squash swish because the 200 is a bit more of a sandwich style, but you essentially just clamp this down on it. And then assuming we're gonna be using a nicer modifier, like a big one, we're gonna take that off so we get the extra flash size. Just be careful with the flash. And you can see right there, there's a little bit of a gap. I usually bring it up to where it's almost resting it. it doesn't really matter 
there though, because it's actually quite strong and there's a lot of case. So it's like where it's grabbing onto is actually quite strong. And I have no problem with that. That's not falling out anywhere soon. This is what I meant by like a nicer handle. So honestly, things like this are actually a little bit better, obviously. This is entirely portable. So that's what that's going for. This puppy here is probably if you're gonna utilize this inside your house a lot more or in your studio, this is the ticket, right? You got your standard Bowens mount. You can mount any of your normal lighting modifiers on here and you're gonna be a happy camper. No different than the usual. It's got the extra port there. It's got the umbrella mount right there that it just slides in and it's got a nice strong handle here, which cool little feature. It's got one of those little like releases. So if it's like caught up against the modifier and you can't twist anymore or it's like here and you really wanna just bring it down, I can, I can move it around before I can uh, loosen it up. I can tighten it up. It's just little features like that that I think are cool. It's worth the money. It's definitely a little bit of money to purchase it, but again, it's worth it because it is a well-built product overall. Yeah, exciting. There's not much in here just because it's got a little bit of your functions. It's got them in multi-languages. Obviously, there's not much to get from this except uh, just a real good bathroom read, right? This is a little bit of time on the toilet if you want to learn a little bit more about your flash. So my final thoughts on who is this for and why would you purchase this? Again, you've got options just the other side of it, the 8200 or the 8400. One being a little bit more portable, a little bit smaller, I'm sure we've both seen it, or the 8400, which is a little bit more pro, probably for a little bit more studio use. And I think you're kind of getting the gist of where I'm going for. It's somewhere right in the middle. Now, if you plan on using this at all in a studio and you're gonna take two, 300 shots in a session, have someone either practicing or you're professional, you wanna skip the 200 and go straight to this. Now the 200 is great. And again, you're going to find a lot of reviews out there about it being a solid choice and you really can't go wrong with it. And that's true. This just has the cycle time and the battery life that's really going to help you get to where you want to and not worry about it. It does high speed sync and it is an absolutely awesome flash for the price and the size. Again, with this slight little addition or purchasing the in-house modifier that slides right onto this, you really can't go wrong with this unit because it's just the most flexible out of all of them. The 400 is just big enough to be annoying and cumbersome to bring around. However, it's pro, does have a Bowen straight on it. It has a few other features that you're paying that extra 80, 100 bucks for. The 200 is just much smaller. It's just really like a real run around, run and shoot, run and gun. You're, you're, you're gonna take it when you're out doing some crazy street photography real quick on the burn, you wanna hold it in your hand and you just wanna get it done. This thing, obviously it's about mounting real quick, putting up maybe an umbrella, utilizing this and just getting the best out of any world or situation you're into. So hopefully you found this useful guys. Uh, this was just a quick unboxing and review. If you'd let me know in the comments if there is anything about it that you would like to know very specifically, and I'll try to get back to you as best I can. If you're interested, we do have a link for it down below. We got Amarama affiliate links that uh, do help support the channel. So if you are interested in one of those, we do have one of those down there. If not, you can get it on Amazon too. You can get it a whole bunch of places. It's pretty cheap. They're usually in a pretty good price point right now. So thank you for checking out the video, guys. Hope to see you in the next one, and uh, I guess I'll catch you. Bye.